When I'm doing a project, I'm always a fan of finding ways to do certain tasks easier and especially faster. This is one of the reasons I've always been a fan of Craig Tools. Now, let me say right off the bat that this video is in no way sponsored by Craig, so everything I'm gonna say here is my own opinion and my own thoughts. So, like I said, I'm a big fan of their tools for two reasons. They make easier and faster ways to accomplish certain tasks. And for the most part, they're financially attainable by the average DIYer. So let's talk about the Craig tools that I love and think that you should consider trying yourself. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna give them a debt-free DIY rating of one through 10. One being the worst and 10 being the best. When most people think of the word Craig jig, the pocket hole jig probably comes to mind. I know that it does for me. I grew up in the lumber industry. My dad has had a sawmill for 30 years now, and so I got to know a lot about lumber. But even though that was the case, I really didn't get familiar with woodworking much until about 10 years ago. Mainly because after I graduated and left home, I swore that I would never touch a board again. <laughs> well, well, well. How the turntables. So I really didn't learn that the pocket hole jig was a thing until I started my woodworking journey. And when I discovered it, I thought that I had learned magic. Uh, I, there was literally nothing that I felt like that I couldn't build. Uh, there have been several upgraded models come to pass since I got mine, but mine still works like a champ, so I've just never seen the need to replace it. There's also a mini version that you can buy, and it's great for clamping onto a board in a tight space, or even if you have a board that's too long to fit in the jig without hitting, say, like the ceiling or something, it works really good for that. The Craig Pocket Hole Jig just simply works. You can purchase the newest version of the Craig Pocket Hole Jig for around 120 bucks, or as a bundle with a few other accessories accessories for about 150. I'm gonna put a link in the description below for those um, if you're interested in that. And so as far as a score is concerned, it's an easy 10 for me. Moving on from there is the Craig Rip Cut. The way that it works is it has a base that attaches to your skill saw and then it allows you to be able to rip pieces from one to 24 inches wide. This is an excellent tool for using to break down plywood and other sheet goods and not have to wrestle it on the table saw. Now, since I have a table saw, I always tend to rip it a little oversized though and then I rerun it on the table saw. It's probably not necessary, but I tend to be a bit of a perfectionist. You have two levels? I use this level to check the other levels. It's my level checking level. I do find that there are a few little things with it. I do occasionally get little bobbles when I rip things sometimes. So the name of the game is slow down, keep it as accurate as you can while you make the cut. It's a great tool and at $39, it's worth every penny in my opinion. I give this a score of nine. Next we have the Craig TrueFlex Featherboard. I bought it for no other reason than I needed one and it was cheap and it was easy to acquire a Lowe's. There's not a lot to say about it other than it's a featherboard and it works. I do find that when you take it loose, it tends to stay a little stuck sometimes in the miter slot and binds a little. Um, it takes a little convincing to get that loose, but other than that, it is great. And if I'm not mistaken, it's made where you can purchase another and then double them up uh, a little taller for like a, a taller featherboard. Um, you can purchase them for around 20 bucks a piece, or I think you can get like a two pack for $35. I give this a score of nine. You can never have enough clamps, right? We hear that old adage all the time. Uh, and for me, the Craig Automax clamps are honestly a couple of my favorite clamps that I own. I have the three inch version and the six inch version. In my opinion, the three inch is better mainly because I tend to find that the six inch is a little tricky to get to clamp right and not misfire sometimes. I don't know if the extra length changes the pressure or what happens there, but um, it's, it's a little wonky every once in a while. Uh, that being said, having the ability to reach further across a piece is still a huge benefit on certain projects. The three inch version is around 30 bucks on Amazon, and for some reason the six inch version is an outrageous price, like, I don't know, like 80 something dollars. So I'm gonna put a link to Lowe's. Uh, it's not much higher than the three inch, so nobody wants to pay more, right? For score, the three inch, I give it a 10, and the six, I would give a nine. Moving on from one style clamp to another is the Craig right angle clamp. The one that I have is manual, but now I think they only make Automax versions of this clamp. Essentially, it's great for glue ups. One end of the clamp is made to go into the actual pocket hole and the other is designed to catch on the opposite side of the workpiece. 
If you've ever had the workpiece shift when you're installing a pocket screw, this helps to prevent that from happening. However, it's kind of a one trick pony as opposed to the other Automax clamps, which I use for everything. Uh, you're really only gonna be able to use this with pocket holes. It costs around 35 bucks and I would give it a score of nine. Earlier we talked about the Craig Rip Cut, so now let's talk about the AccuCut. The AccuCut is basically a poor man's track saw. It is a four foot track that uses the same skill saw attachment as the Rip Cut. I really only use it for sheet goods, but I really love this thing. The main downside is that you're, if you're cutting a wide piece, you gotta be really careful when you finish the cut on the opposite side, so as not to move the saw blade until the, it completely stops spinning. The slightest movement will cut into the poly blue material that it's made of, and then that could affect your accuracy in the future. I've used this thing for years and it's a tool that is pretty good and makes life much simpler. It's about 69 bucks or you can buy the rip cut with it as well as like a combo. It's about $108 or so. Um, I would give this thing a score of 10. Before we move on to the next tool, I wanna mention something about our scoring method here. One, it's just my opinion, and two, it's not compared to any other tool than itself and how well it works for the job that it was made to do. I know somebody out there, your head is about to explode right now because I gave a Craig Aki cut a 10, and you're thinking, well, you obviously don't have a Festool track saw. And you're right, I don't. Mainly because I don't feel like selling a kidney on the black market so that I can afford one. But I know a good reputable track saw is better by and large. But in my opinion, there's something to be said for a tool that provides a pathway for anybody to create fun and amazing projects. Anyway, let's get back to the tools. The Craig Precision Setup Bars are next on our list and these are so handy. These simple little bars come in a case and they're sized from 1 8 to half inch. They allow you to be able to create quick, repeatable dados. Then you can also use them to check the depth of the cut. They're also super handy for setting up accurate plunge depths for your router. I use these on just about every project that requires a router or a dado. So I would definitely consider putting these in your arsenal if you haven't already. They're around 60 bucks and they're worth every penny. Give them a score of 10. The Craig Cabinet Hardware Jig is one of my most recent purchases. Prior to buying it, I always made my own jig specific to the drawers that I was building at the time um, and the hardware that I was going to be installing. After using it on a couple of projects now, I can honestly say this is a great little jig. It has positive stops on the hardware side every half an inch, which is good as long as your hardware isn't anything at a quarter or something and three quarters. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. Also, the deepest it will go is a five inch center. So if you have drawers that are larger than 10 inches, this probably won't be helpful. It doesn't include a bit, but it will accept a 3 16th or 4.5 millimeter drill bit. The inside of the drill bit guide is steel and makes straight and accurate holes a breeze. When you clamp it in place, I do find that the plastic flexes a little, so be careful with that. But all in all, for 30 bucks, this thing is a must have if you have smaller drawer fronts. I give it a score of 8.5. The Craig Drawer Slide Jig is a wonderful tool. It mounts on the face frame and faces backward to allow you to install the slides to your cabinet. And then you can turn it around and mount it on the face frame facing outward to have a place to set your drawer boxes while you mount the boxes to the slides. And I discovered that you can also use these on an undermount drawer slide as well, which is kind of a bonus. It's a fantastic tool that works great. It's around 34 bucks and it will make your drawer slide install jobs so simple. I give it a score of 10. The Craig Adjustable Shelf Pin Jig is amazing. Let me reiterate that. It is amazing. It's simple, it comes with storage for the bit, and it just works. I use it on every shelf pin cabinet that I build and it allows you to knock out a whole row in no time. And when you're done, they are literally perfect every time. It's about 39 bucks, and in my opinion, it's one of the most flawless jigs that Craig makes. Just buy it. Score of 10. So, which one do I hate? Well, here it is. And honestly, this may be an unpopular opinion, but it's the Craig Corner Clamp. I bought this thing years ago, and I don't like it at all. 
I see guys use it on YouTube and it currently has like four and a half stars on Amazon and I just don't know how. I fight this thing every time I use it on a corner. <laughs> it constantly moves my workpiece around and I literally threw it out of the shop and across the driveway last summer. Then I went and got it and I tossed it in the trash. And then I went and got it back out because I knew at some point I'd need it for YouTube content. So you're welcome. I say don't buy it, but that's just me. I, I'm gonna put a link in the description, but I wouldn't buy it. I, you're probably not gonna hear a lot of people say that, but um, you do you, boo. It's, it's your money. So it costs around 50 bucks and I give it a score of one. There are a lot of other Craig tools that I don't own and didn't talk about in this video. If you own one, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Like I mentioned earlier, I love the tools mentioned in this video, not because they're the best ever made, but because they make projects a lot easier and financially accessible for the average weekend warrior. In my opinion, that's worth a lot.